Okay, recording in progress. Here we go. Let's try that again. <laughs> All right. Okay, welcome everybody. I'm Mrs. Flowers. I'm the um, school principal at AOM and Jeff Waterbury is our Falcon Friends lead. Jeff's going to chime in so you can see his face. Oh. All right, and um, we want to start by saying how much we uh, value and appreciate our volunteers when we can get them on campus. <laughs> um, and uh, at AOM, we've never been really short or shy of volunteers. It's just right now we've had a trouble with the um, parameter of getting folks on campus. If you um, can um, mute your mic, um, uh, unless you're chiming in with a question, that would be super helpful. Um, I can do it myself, but then I have to scroll through everybody and, and mute or mute all and then I have to exit. So, okay, so this is our Falcon Friend orientation for 2020-21. I don't think it'll be too long, so hang tight and we'll get right through it. Okay, so these are the outcomes we're looking for from Falcon Friends um, to get, or at the end of this orientation so that you can understand the scope and purpose of our Falcon Friends, who key people are on campus, what we hope to happen with Falcon Friends, and your role as a volunteer with Falcon Friends, and then uh, basic routines and procedures that kind of happen every day for you when you um, come in for a volunteer session. <clears throat> our vision and purpose. First of all, it's to have fun, and that's just not just for the kids, but for you guys too. Um, build relationships offer a presence which is visible and positive interactions on campus. Okay, this is our school um, uh, vision statement. We are a collaborative partnership of students, parents, teachers, and staff, building a positive and respectful environment where students are critical global thinkers invested in their own learning. And that's been a, that's been a part of our mission uh, and vision at AOM for a number of years. and. Uh, I don't see any reason to change that because that's solid all around. Okay, so people you've already met, Jeff Waterbury, who's our Falcon Friends coordinator, myself, uh, folks you will see on campus when you come in, um, Mr. Liebentritt, who's our assistant principal, uh, Brian Lavin is um, our uh, campus supervisor that uh, is there for the greatest length of time during the day, so he has the most knowledge. Uh, David De Leon is uh, uh, one of our newer campus supervisors, and Christian Cortez, another newer campus supervisor. We have one more that we just hired, but I'm not going to drop the name in yet. So that person's still TBD. <laughs> okay. Folks, you'll see in the front office, Laura Borrego, that's where you go to sign in. Uh, Nell Hazelwood is our administrative assistant. Other people that might be important to you on campus would be Becky Rawlings, our health tech and Nicole Bart Forhis, our day custodian. So those people might be people that you interact with um, when you're on campus. Okay, so Falcon Friends, the whole purpose is to encourage the following. Okay, so we're talking about creativity, student engagement, including uninvolved students. You know, I'm gonna back up a little bit because maybe you guys don't, I'm not sure I put a slide on here on exactly what Falcon Friends is and what you do. So I'm going to um, kind of go off the slides a little bit. So um, the whole purpose of uh, having a, a folks come on campus and volunteer is to expand the number of positive adult relationships on campus where kids can see positive examples of um, how adults behave and also increase um, the, the number of uh, opportunities for kids during that lunchtime. So um, when a Falcon friends come on campus and they're usually in groups of two and say two people can go and grab the basketballs and open up the basketball courts so more kids can spread out and play more um, uh, select games of basketball out on the courts. Two people might say, hey, you know what, we're going to open up the soccer fields, let's grab the soccer balls, or we're going to open up the soccer fields for kids to play catch with footballs, take those out. Uh, you know what, we're going to open up the foyer of the gym, set up the tables and have a game day. We'll get all the board games out so the kids can come in and play board games. Or we're going to open up the foyer of the gym for um, air hockey or um, foosball, which we already have the equipment. We just don't always have the people there to help monitor those games. Giant Jenga or cornhole. 
I couldn't remember the name of that one. So lots of things and supplies that we have on campus. It's just making sure that we have the adults there to help monitor that and encourage kids to use the equipment the right way and encourage kids to um, uh, have good sportsmanlike behavior and positive interactions. So I'm gonna roll back to the slides now. So encouraging creativity, student engagement, including uninvolved students. That's a really, really big one right now with eight um, missing out on lunchtime and brunch. Um, I mean, even when we came back to school, we didn't ha really have a real brunch or a lunch. So it's been 18 months for most of our kids since they've really been in a, a lunch or brunch environment and we're feeling it. <laughs> they're, 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 they're getting a little bit better, but they're still struggling with how to interact with each other um, in a chill and appropriate chill because I'm not really sure what other word to use to describe it. There is a lot of like really high energy at lunchtime that um, sometimes just needs to step it down and chill out. Um, otherwise, we've got um, more commotion than uh, than is sometimes, I, I don't know if I want to say feel safe, but in the the supervisor in me starts going, okay, too much, too much, too much. It's too much action. I don't know if I can keep my eyes on all this action. So bringing it down a step, having controlled and fun activities for kids to do. Um, let me give you an example. First few days on campus where lunch was like, wow, it was like we had three, um, a thousand uh, second graders because <laughs> they were really excited and energetic. And after a few days, I'm like, we got to get that basketball court out here open and get the ping pong tables out. Then that brought it down a step. Kids had controlled and um, pleasant activities to do. And we saw it like, okay, that's more closer to what we're used to at lunchtime at AOM. And so we know when we get our Falcon friends on board again, then we'll have that same kind of, hey, kids have things to do that are um, uh, monitored and appropriate. And it gives, uh, it, it, instead of them making their own crazy fun. So, okay. So maintain that positive uh, and safe environment for all students. Oh, I, I went off on a tangent, um, but in, including uninvolved students. So we have students who are kind of not connecting way more than we usually do. Some of them have gotten really used to being by themselves and now they're back in a larger school environment and um, it, it's not smooth for all the kids. Um, some of them are still struggling. So, you know, having an adult who can say, hey, you know, do you think that maybe so-and-so might wanna play or maybe we can encourage them to get, you know, throw the corn hole and see if they're any good at it. You know, those little bits and pieces that myself and the support staff do, but the more adults we have doing it on campus and, and encouraging kids, the better off we are. Okay. Reinforce those positive behaviors with compliment and offer a helping hand if those opportunities present themselves. Of course, communication with admin and, and staff, <clears throat> encouraging students to participate and being a great example to all of our students with our AOMS code, uh, code of conduct. But most of all, it's building positive and fun relationships. Things you would avoid when you're on campus. The big one is the temptation to offer corrective advice. It's really hard to park that at the door. <laughs> and um, it's really hard. And I even try my best at lunchtime to, you know, kind of calm that down because, you know, it's, you know, they got to be able to, to cut loose a little bit. It's not all, they don't have to be perfect at lunchtime. The temptation to intervene as a parent. Oh, very big for me. My daughter's in uh, the second lunch and I am always tempted to go peek and see how she's doing, who her friends are. <laughs> but I really have to, to be conscientious and, and avoid that part of it and just be a, a great supervisor on campus and let her have her friends in her space. Um, you, you don't wanna roam around cam uh, campus outside of our lunchtime areas. I know this one sounds silly, but don't hop the fence and retrieve a ball. Um, there's snakes over there. Please don't hop the fence and retrieve a ball. Um, if there's a fight on campus, which is very, very rare, um, I mean, very rare, we don't is ask that adults uh, break up fights. Um, you'll have a radio. Um, hold on just a second. We'll see. If you could remember to mute your um, mic when you come in, that'd be great. Um, 
you, you will have a radio, you just call for a radio and a staff member will come and we have very specific ways of um, getting kids to get their hands off each other if they're in a conflict. Um, and we never apprehend students. I don't even apprehend students. If we have a student who's doing something inappropriate, I use my voice and my words to get them to move where I need them to. We never really actually put our hands on students, take them somewhere. Okay, so those are all things to avoid if you're on campus. But your role as a Falcon Friend volunteer is to help maintain a safe and caring environment on campus while providing opportunities for play. Oh, I should have said that in the beginning, sorry. <laughs> I gotta rearrange the slides next time I do this. What to expect on campus. So kids are a little different on campus than they are at home. Um, they're very loud. <laughs> so if you have quiet kids uh, in your home and you're there amongst, it's about 525 kids at each of the lunches, you're gonna be like, wow, it's loud out here but it is a joyful, joyful loudness. Um, every time I leave the office and start heading down for lunch, I just crack a smile every time because you can just hear the positive energy. Occasionally, you might hear some language that makes you feel uncomfortable. Um, most of the times kids, especially our kids at AOM are very, very conscientious about not using profanity. But if you were to hear some profanity, it is okay to raise your eyebrows and say things like, oh my goodness, my ears are burning. I don't know if I wanna hear that. Um, not necessarily lecture them on the foul language, but using profanity is not allowed at school. So telling a campus supervisor is perfectly okay. Um, it's pretty rare that you will hear it, but at AOM, but you might, okay. You may see clothing, which might offend you or which you do not approve. Um, uh, middle school kids are right on the edge of that dress code often. <laughs> they really <laughs> like to take it right up to wherever the dress code edge is. Um, mm -hmm. it's okay to let the staff members be in charge of dress code as a volunteer. It's probably not something you want to even no, it's definitely not something you want to step into, but staff will take care of those things. Uh, students may litter. I need to take frequently out of there because, wow, I don't know what you guys did with those kids over 18 months, but they're not throwing trash on the ground hardly at all. It's really cool to see at brunch when we have a thousand of them out on campus all at once. You won't get to see that, but a thousand of them and then they exit and head off to their advisory class and we look around campus and they'll be like, two pieces of trash after they were all out there eating. They're really, really good. Um, you'll see me and most of the campus supervisors walk around with um, uh, pickers for trash. Uh, and we try any, I mean, as quickly as possible, when we see a piece of trash on the ground, we pick it up or ask a student to pick it up or ask for a volunteer. Um, and that helps a, a lot because it sets the culture in their mind and their heads that, you know what? We, this isn't a place where we throw trash on the ground. And we're what, we're three, are we at week three, three and a half, right around there. And um, that culture is set perfectly. The kids are not throwing trash on the ground, which is great. So we'll keep it, keep that up. Um, students may try to disregard the social distancing rules and hug and get close to each other. That's okay, it's okay. We're, we're not gonna fuss at them about that because um, those social distancing rules are not um, as strict as they were for us over the pandemic and, um, and that's okay. But we really have to be mindful when I talk to them about what I call full contact friendliness, um, where they don't just, you know, throw an arm over somebody, they throw an arm and they're getting ready to do a noogie or whatever. And we're kind of like, oh, okay, let's just pat each other on the back. We don't need to be no full contact friendliness. Students, your students, your own children may act very differently at school um, than in other settings or your students' friends who you're used to having on maybe over for, um, uh, you know, playing video games or something like that. And then you see them on campus. They may act very differently. So uh, don't worry about that. That's okay. We call that code switching in sociology. It's a, it's a definite um, real phenomena and we do it ourselves. Uh, we act very differently when we're at work than we do when we're at the beach or um, we speak differently when we're talking to our friends when we think we're in a private conversation than we do when we're speaking with our grandparents and students do the same. So um, just, uh, you'll get to see it. And you know, if you're studying sociology, it's a wonderful, wonderful um, uh, bit of observing that you'll get to do. Okay, there we go. Okay, 
So things that you want to do when you're a falcon friend is to deter negative contact by your presence. It's the number one thing when we learn in teacher school and um, it's the best one and that's called proximity. So if you see something on campus that maybe you're like, hmm, not so sure that that's uh, the right behavior, just moseying on over and getting close to the kiddos who are doing that behavior is usually enough to stop it because they'll be like, oh, grown up. That's right. And they'll code switch and be like, okay, I'm not just hanging out with my friends right now. I'm still at school. And they'll do the behavior that you're, um, ex that positive behavior they're expecting. Reinforce those positive behaviors with compliment. And I should have in here, but we also have um, Falcon tickets that we give out too. So Falcon friends can give out Falcon tickets and give them out plentifully, plentifully as many as you want. They're free for us to make. So just hand them out like shredded paper. Offer a helping hand if it presents itself. So little things like I had a kid kiddo today who for some reason couldn't open the string cheese. <laughs> I don't know if she was, it was tough though. And she's like, you know, I'm like, you want me to help you open that? So we were able to get that string cheese open. Um, you might think that only little kids like uh, need help opening things and yogurts and stuff like that, but you'll kind of keep your eye out and be able to do that. You don't have to do it very often. Sixth graders on up usually uh, have it figured out. Uh, communicate with uh, administrators and uh, or office staff if, if a problem arises, for sure. Encourage students to participate and be an example of our campus code of conduct. Okay. So confidentiality is probably one of the harder things in this job uh, because you're, you know your own kids. You might know some of the neighbor kids who are there. You might know your own kid's friends. Um, you might never know a uh, kiddo, but now have not known, but then you get to know their name. Remember that everything that happens at school is a confidential environment in the sense that um, if one of your neighbor kids is behaving a certain way at school and you're like, you know, um, I'm, I'm not sure I like that. I'm, you know, and you talk to somebody else in the neighborhood about that student's behavior on campus and that that would be not okay. Um, it's really even not really okay to talk to that student's parents about their behavior on campus. Uh, if their behavior on campus gets to the point where we're alarmed or we're concerned, then staff will address it. If it gets to a point where you're alarmed or you're concerned, then you bring it to staff and we'll move forward on it if, if it's something that breaks the school rules or we feel the parents need to be notified of it. It's the harder thing to do because, you know, you're part of a great community and, um, you know, you're like, hey, being part of this great community, it's not just me watching over my own students, it's watching over other students. And, and you're going to feel a desire to um, connect with uh, that great resource at, called the parent, um, but your role would be to send that through administration so we would make that contact. Uh, another thing that's really exciting is parents like to take pictures of their kids and getting a, getting like a live action shot of a kiddo at school is a great uh, thing for the memory book or for your slideshow that you have of your own students during their eighth grade year or something like that. Um, but uh, there are very strict limitations on putting things, taking pictures, first of all, at school and putting things up on social media. So as a Falcon friend, you, you should not be pulling out your camera phone, your phone, your camera, um, or video of any students on campus, including your own. And that would be because in the background, there are other students nearby. Even if you say, and I hear this one quite a lot and say, you know, I'm a stars, I know all these kids, they're at my house all the time. I, their parents don't have any problem with me taking a picture. And that could totally be 100%, I believe you. It's just in the school environment, we have to follow those um, uh, very strict rules about uh, taking pictures and posting on social media. So we ask our Falcon friends to forego that uh, and take those pictures of those kiddos and their friends um, when you have a uh, game night at your house. Okay, so pretty simple routines and procedures. Um, when you come in, you would sign in at the front desk uh, as a volunteer. You need to have your driver's license with you. Uh, you scan in using the little bar um, scanner thingy on the little computer. It's pretty straightforward. And there'll be a spot for you where to check off that you're volunteering. 
you want to do your health uh, self check and that actually the order of that should be reversed you should be doing your health self check before you volunteer before you come in so that means you're checking your temperature do you have any uh, signs or symptoms of uh, COVID-19 um, you feeling healthy enough to volunteer on campus when you come to campus you're going to sign in there's a little station that we have um, back by the teacher's mailboxes that's set up for our Falcon friends. You get a lanyard so we <laughs> don't accidentally <laughs> call, think you're a student, <laughs> and, which I, just, I did with one of our staff. I'm like, what? Why do you have your cell phone out? What? And she's like, oh, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Maribel, because <laughs> I didn't recognize her mask on and everything. Uh, so you'll have your lanyard on and um, uh, you get your lander and then you get to check in with the campus coordinator or the Falcon Friends coordinator on what station and your equipment. So um, that'll all be um, figured out uh, uh, with Jeff. Jeff is going to be our coordinator. So when we know which days and and um, uh, um, well, I guess just which days um, or which days of the week you'll be coming, then he'll plug you in and say, okay, this is what you're going to be doing. Um, then you get to check out um, equipment uh, and that's all downstairs right in the foyer of the gym. There's a whole room dedicated to extra um, sports equipment and um, that's where you pick up your radio because they're in their little chargers and um, that you can check, usually check in with Brian. He's the one uh, who will help you out. And if you wanted to open up a basketball court, he'll be able to tell you and say, okay, well, we've got our PE classes using that basketball court. So use the other basketball court, things like that. Uh, and then you just go out there and um, you encourage a few kids and say, hey, I'm opening up a basketball court and there'll be a flood of kids who want to go with you and uh, or, or, you know, to play catch or soccer. And then you just let them play. <laughs> it's not a whole lot to it. Uh, they usually don't have any problem playing and figuring it out on their own. Um, I guess a little side note for any uh, football or games of catch. Uh, we, um, we play flag football and we have the flags. We do not do two hand touch and we do not do any tackling, uh, soccer, uh, had, uh it, well, by the rules of the game, you're not supposed to be, you know, kicking each other or hands on each other, but, um, again, no, no contact on that sort of thing. Um, and that's just because they get so excited and then, um, it's, uh, it's dangerous. Okay, then bells will ring. And if you're doing both um, lunches, you'll hang around for a little bit and hang out for the second lunch or vice versa. You'll come for the second lunch and do the same routine. And then um, after the lunch that you're done with, you'll turn in your equipment, you'll put your radio back in, you'll go up to the office, you'll take your lanyard off, you'll sign out. And uh, you'll actually sign out on the Falcon Friends. Um, sorry, you'll sign out on the uh, Falcon Friends sign in or sign in sheet also, and there'll be a spot if you have any comments or want to give any feedback. Um, you know, things that could be done. You know, the soccer balls are all flat. We need to get those fixed or stuff like that. You don't want to put in the comments. You know, I had a problem with you know little Janie Smith. She keeps on such and such. Don't do that. Instead, come and talk to an administrator and say, hey, I'm having a concern with this student um, or the campus supervisors. So again, urgent matters come to staff members. OK, so uh, first lunch. Oh. OK, I know why those are highlighted. <laughs> I, put, I put times in there because we just changed the bell schedule. So I'll get the right times in there. Uh, those are not the right times. That is not what lunchtime is at, our first lunch and second lunch. So I'll grab the bell schedule in just a second and post that up for us so we can see it. Um, they're much earlier in the day. And I highlighted it so I could remember to change it. And then I didn't. OK, uh, let's see. I already talked about all of that stuff. Now, one thing that's super fun, and if you want to be in charge of it, it's great. And that is dodgeball in the gym. You want to talk about being everybody's favorite Falcon friend is if you open dodgeball in the gym, it's so fun. It's my favorite too. Although when I play, it changes from dodgeball to how many people can hit the principal. 
legally. So, <laughs> so yeah, but they love dodgeball. Okay, so here's the map of the school and the areas um, that uh, you would be in. So mostly you'll be, um, most of the kids hang out in the common area and the lunch area. We also call this common air, commons area the lower quad. Okay, um, we, we give them, you know, it, lunch is a half hour long. Uh, we give them, um, you know, 10 minutes before we go open the soccer fields or the basketball courts because uh, otherwise they'll never eat. So we try and say, okay, we're going to, why don't you grab a little bite to eat and then we'll head out and um, uh, do that. So they, you're, you'll enter the front office here, you'll get your badge, you'll do all that. Then you'll come out the door and you walk around campus down here to the gym. This is the foyer of the gym. There's a little room right here at the foyer at the gym where all the supplies are kept and the radios and everything. And you'll get to connect with Brian. His, uh, the office for our campus supervisors is right there next door to it. And then you'll decide, you know what? I want to do basketball or I want to, do, and it's your interest. You, if you're like, I want, I love giant Jenga. I'm getting these things out and I'm going to get as many kids as I can to play giant Jenga. Fine with me. Um, or you know what? My thing is, is I'm just going to be an extra set of eyes over here in the lunch area or, you know, we like to get more things open rather than just having more people there looking at children. Um, so we're going to kind of hopefully get you to uh, be interested in supervising soccer or basketball or um, uh, air hockey or something like that. So the foyer of the gym is where um, the air hockey is over here on this side and the foosball is on this side. Um, you can set up tables in here for gaming. Um, it's all good. <clears throat> all right. So you'll walk up and you'll take it. Usually we, uh, the basketball courts, we're able to open this one <coughs> and sometimes this one also. And we're able to open the uh, top, um, the soccer. Um, but we'll, uh, Brian will know if uh, PEs, the PE classes have to use one of those fields. Uh, he'll know and be able to say, okay, we can't open soccer because they're doing a track and field activity um, at PE. And we do have PE classes at the same time we have lunches, because remember we have those two lunches. Okay, that's all I have, <laughs> but you may have questions. So um, actually, you know what, let me uh, get out of here and go over to our bell schedule. Oops, sorry about that, you can see my email coming in. Uh, schedule so I can't even remember the times for the uh, the new times on the um, everything's gonna move slowly the new times on the bell schedules there it is the new one okay it's taking its sweet time okay so here's what you're looking at on a Monday Tuesday Wednesday or Friday the first lunch starts at 11 11 and goes to 11.41, it's 30 minutes long. The second lunch starts at 12.04 and goes to 12.34. So if you're interested in supporting us and helping out at both lunches, you'd probably wanna get there at about 11 o'clock uh, to get there and have 10 minutes to get yourself settled and checked in before all the kids come and get out of there for sure by you know, 12.40, 12.45. It's, it's pretty quick to wrap up. If kids go kick the ball really far in soccer, you tell them to go run after it. Don't you guys go run after it, okay, to, to wrap it up. And then um, on Thursdays, remember, we have a short day on Thursday. So on Thursdays, uh, you it's uh, first lunch is at 1041, so probably around 1030. So you're in and settled. And if you want to stay through, tell us second lunch. I'm sure you'd be out of there by 1205, 1210 tops. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna close, uh, I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna pop over to the chat and see if you have any questions in the chat. Um, and uh, I am also going to add again, if in case we had some folks who came in late, the sign-in form that I need you to do. So in the chat, I just put the sign-in sheet so that I know you've done the training. 
Um, and um, if you can click on that and, and enter your name and information for the training. And then uh, I'd like to open it up for questions. Remember, we have experienced Falcon friends for sure in the form of Jeff and a couple other people who have done it. Um, who, if you want to ask some questions about scheduling or some of the details I might have missed that you're still not sure about, you can either pop those questions into the chat or you can just open your mic and um, just say so. And I'll say, okay, so a couple questions coming in. Uh, would covering just one lunch per period be beneficial or is prefer preferable to cover both lunches? Oh, well, we would love you to be there for both lunches because the more adults on campus, the better off it is for us. Um, so, but if, if the only thing you can do is one lunch, that's fine, no problem there. Okay, are we allowed to join in the games with the kids or on only allowed to supervise? So um, I think it can go a couple of different ways and you're gonna wanna use your adult spidey senses to figure out what makes more sense. Um, mostly we're encouraging them to interact with each other. So if we can get them to incur and interact with each other without necessarily being part of the game, then sure. But um, we've had situations where some kids um, uh, or maybe struggling with the making of friends or struggling with um, uh, getting things started. And so you might be out there and, you know, this kiddo wants to play basketball, but nobody's come over to their basketball game. Sure, go over there and say, hey, you know what, I'll shoot hoops for you with you for a little bit. And remember the kids, even though some of them are up to 13 and later in the year, 14 years old, um, they like you guys. <laughs> they really still do. And so they'll be like, hey, you know what? I see Mr. Waterbury over there. I'm going to go shoot hoops. He's shooting hoops. So I'm going to go shoot hoops with him. And you can kind of pull and encourage. And then that kiddo who was all by themselves now has a group and you might fade off of that group and let them go. So you'll kind of get a feel for it yourself in, in there. Same thing if you're doing... Um, if you're, say, supervising board games and somebody wants to play Battleship really badly and nobody else is playing Battleship, jump in and say, I'll play Battleship with you. That's great. Um, but you also got to be mindful of certain things, too, like playing soccer out there. You don't want to get injured. <laughs> OK, or um, and I know that's like, what are you talking about? As far as, come on. Um, but the other thing is how how much contact there is with you and another student. And I mean, physical contact. So you might shoot hoops playing basketball but you're not gonna wanna be in a in a three-on-three uh, -three game because your physicalness next to students, it's just uh, probably better to give yourself some more space um, in that sense. Okay, who is the contact for info? Jeff or whomever we're supposed to schedule with. Also can, as if, can my spouse participate if she wasn't on this training? So we have, we're recording this training so that if your spouse would like to participate, we will send the recording to your spouse to um, view it. And um, then they'll, have, they'll be able to do the sign-in sheet, uh, uh, the training sign-in, and then they'll be officially in. Um, the contact person is Jeff. So he, in your sign in, you've put in your, uh, your phone number, cell phone, hopefully, so he can text and email so he can, <clears throat> he can tell you, um, you know, hey, this is the schedule we're looking at. Does it work for you? Okay. Uh, yes, Bailey can come back as soon as, and Bailey's um, one of our um, uh, four legged. Uh, canine falcon friends. <laughs> Golden Retriever. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, a support dog, uh, yes, Bailey can come back. As soon as I can have the humans come back, Bailey can come back. Okay. Love it. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> you bet. Uh, can volunteers park in the regular parking lot? Yes, you can and you should park in the regular parking lot. Yes. Um, <laughs> let's see. Perfect. Okay, so I'm look, scanning up and down to see if there I have, are any other I questions. Have a, I have yes. a question. Um, so I, I was vaccinated in England with AstraZeneca and I'm trying to get Moderna here. I've only been through one because it's not accepted over here. Um, is, would Astra be accepted right now? Because I've got another few weeks to get the Moderna course done. 
I don't know. Um, that's going to be a better question for um, if you email me directly and I'll put my email address in the chat as well, and we can run it through our health office and we get some more information. Um, but let me tell this whole group, we're up to 29 people now, um, that we are not ready to start until we get permission from the board to allow volunteers back on campus. So we're probably two weeks out. We're expecting to start right around October. So that might be able to, you'll be able to finish your course. And, and yeah, yeah, I'm like okay. another week or two out. Um, I have uh, just one other comment. I, I'm glad to see this. We're, we're a new family and, you know, being, parents not being on campus other than for registration uh, feel pretty disconnected. And yep. this is the first live call we've had for really anything. And, you know, my son coming, coming from a different country, he's really struggled to make friends. Mm, okay. So he said there's like one basketball court with 30 kids and it's just mayhem. Yep. So I'm glad to see this program. They'll start. I told him just wait a few more weeks and yep. stuff. So I'm really glad to see this all happen. Yep. Yep. And we're very, very excited for it to happen too. We've been waiting at Falcon. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, Falcon Friends has been, I, Jeff, I think it's about 10 years since Falcon Friends has been implemented. I think it's been that long. Uh, it, running AOM without the parents at lunchtime has been rough. <laughs> we really miss you guys. Um, okay. Let's see. Let me scroll up and down, make sure that we have questions. Um, yeah, so um, Ken says that, you know, you won't be able to volunteer regularly, but can come randomly maybe once a month. So you're going to you're going to put that in the comment section where I asked you to sign in and then Jeff will know that and Jeff will, uh, Jeff's going to be your contact for scheduling. Right, Jeff? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Jeff, you're not going to get, are you going to get out of this training with only, only monosyllabic? <laughs> no, I, actually, I was just going to say that um, for the first week or two, I think I can be there every single day so I can walk everybody through everything and where the balls are. And there's also a place to heat up your lunch. If you bring your lunch, uh, there's a refrigerator so you can bring your lunch and, and eat. I, I used to bring my kids food and heat it up and then bring it to them. And that's, they'd talk to me and sometimes their friends, I would bring their friends food too. So I mean, it's, it, there's, there's a lot of perks, um, but I will be there the first week or two for sure, unless there's a, like Reza might be there one day and he can train people or, or Tim uh, Benson. There's a few other people, Angelica, that know what to do every day. So but any day that there's all new people, I'll be there and train everybody outside. Thanks. And remember, you've got all that staff there too, Brian and David and Chris and me and Joe. Um, and we're, we're all out there at lunch constantly all the time anyway. So, um, and, and then one other new person. So you see there's six staff members and there's 525 students. Um, and that is, that is exactly the ratio that the state of California expects, a 1 to 100 ratio for supervising middle school and high school students. Um, so we would like to have more than that, but that's the ratio that's, that, that we get. So the more, um, more eyes and more connections that our kiddos have, the better off we are. Um, joining, okay. okay. No, you, it, yes, Ms. Randles, you might've missed a bit, but we are recording. So we will be able to share the recording with you. Okay, at least I'm pretty sure I'm still recording. Oh yeah, I am. Okay, all right. So let's uh, see if anyone else has any other questions that you wanna pop into the chat or um, uh, add to things. Let's see, let me put my email address in there. So everybody has that. I'd be surprised if y'all don't have it, but. Um. <laughs> I have a question being an eighth grade parent, Mrs. Flowers, since I was a Falcon friend in the sixth grade, but we didn't have seventh grade and now I'm doing it again. Will I get front row seats? <laughs> front row seats. So that's the perk for being a Falcon friend. If your child right. is in eighth grade, you get front row seats at promotion ceremony. Um, and, uh, some, some people, that's all they come for. <laughs> I think the requirement is you have to volunteer at least four times throughout the school year and you get front row seats. So that's fine with me. That's all you're there for. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you'll find that there's a lot more joy to it than just, uh, that little piece, but that's, that's a good perk. Forgot to mention that. That's true. Okay. So, um, 
the thing I didn't really talk about, what we kind of talked about in conversation is you have to be vaccinated. So um, prior to uh, coming in, we'll get the um, vaccination, a copy of your vaccination card. So we have it on file. We'll do that at the front office when you first come in, that's no problem. Um, and then you don't have to show it every time or anything like that. Okay, Jeff, will you throw your email into the chat also? So we have that handy for folks. All right. And I, th I think that's it. I think that's it. So uh, uh, you'll hear from Jeff before you probably hear from me. And um, we'll keep our fingers crossed that the board is ready to <laughs> allow us to have volunteer regular volunteers back on campus. Um, and as soon as I know that, I'll um, announce it to you guys. I'll probably do another announcement and push to our families to say, hey, um, if you're interested in doing Falcon Friends, you have to do this recorded training and um, uh, be sure that you're all trained up and ready to go. Okay, well, I think we're going to wrap it up. Sorry, I, it went a little longer than I thought it would. My apologies for going long. And um, I think that's it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you on campus soon, I hope. Yeah. Thank right. you. Take care. Stop recording. No, stop.